In this video, I'm finally gonna paint my chapter master who I revealed over two years ago and have been hesitating to paint ever since. Not only do I paint him, I take it a step or two further. We'll get to that, but there's something that's held me back. Like, like something at the back of my head that's made me feel a little bit weird about it. It's, it's tabletop table time. First, a little bit of a flashback into the creation of Osun Ursa. This was a project which I made a whole video for just over two years ago as a collaboration with the incredible sculptor Last Light Creative, who with my input and over a painstaking period of time worked with me to create the green stuff and hand sculpted elements of the flowing robes, the ambitious conversion of a chapter master I hoped would be an exciting and aesthetically really unique character. When I received him in that video, I also also continued to make changes in the direction that was feeling more and more right for my chapter, specifically towards embracing those aesthetic elements of the Ojibwe nation. By the end of that video, he was a fully sculpted character ready to paint and his sat on the shelf for two years. It's been so scary for so many reasons. I'll go into the details of it later in this video, but I'm finally painting it. Before I do, I need to, of course, let you know about our Kickstarter. If you're not aware, we're running a Kickstarter. There's only a week or so left. I'll share the details of that later in the video, but suffice it to say that this is the best value you'll ever get. Let's jump into the paint job. One of the main reasons I haven't painted him is time. I can't justify much time being taken away from my core responsibilities on the Jazza channel, running and administrating the multiple channels that I head over here at Jazza Studios, which meant that the several days that I would want to spend painting him just would not be possible in my schedule. It had to happen at home, which honestly, I'm really happy about because that is where I hobby. Side note, if you're curious or interested about this, my hobby home painting setup, this is actually an invention of mine that I made again several years ago. I haven't put it out there for you guys. And if you're really interested or excited about that, I'm actually gonna share a a tour of it later in the video and see if that's something you're interested in. Say, so, of course, by removing him from his base and pinning him to a cork so I could have maximum access to painting all of his little nooks and crannies, but also because I actually don't envision him staying on that base. In the meantime, let's get started with our base tone, a mix of mottled cool color aerosols leading our way up to a light cream. So like I said, there are multiple reasons why it's taken so long to paint Osun. One of them was my time, like I mentioned. The other was the pressure. And it's not like people have been sitting around waiting for me to paint him, but there's, there's just this internal conflict when it comes to the quality I feel like I can put out compared to what I'm surrounded by. And ever since I've immersed myself in this hobby again and launched tabletop time and my expectations and standards of what I see as quality or exciting work has risen with it. Over those next two years with every ambitious project one after another and as the landscape of incredible painters and professionals in this hobby on YouTube and on social media has continued to flourish, the expectation of what I would do that would be appealing has continued to feel like it won't meet expectations, even if there aren't any there. I am surrounded by incredibly talented, passionate hobbyists who spend a lot more time doing this and at a professional standard than I do. I can't justify spending much of my workday time on a painting project like this. But recently I've been getting really invigorated in my personal hobby time again. I've been painting quite a bit of Marvel Crisis Protocol miniatures and gearing up to teach my son how to play some tabletop games and really enjoying cracking out my portable workstation and painting for a few hours every few evenings. And that's the way I wanted to approach painting my chapter master. Not with the expectation or pressure that he needs to be at a certain standard, but that he just needs to be to my best standard. But along with that comes some difficult choices like color scheme. But I had thought in great depth about the color choices that I made initially for my chapter. Hints of these brassy colors and the accents. And then of course, some of the natural earthy tones and pigment. So while I wanted my chapter master's paint scheme to harmonize with that, I didn't want him to disappear in the fold of all of the other space bears. I'd considered initially going with a really strong white aesthetic, a really bright, noble sort of angelic feel, something reminiscent of a great 
polar bear. This was also inspired by the Terminators video that we did here on this channel, where they were the more elite troops, of course, and painted with polar bears in mind, being one of the greatest, strongest, biggest forms of bear. But white is also in the Ojibwe color wheel, the medicine wheel, as representing intellect and elders, wisdom. And while this would be fitting, I actually felt like it would be more fitting to incorporate all of those colors. Each direction represents something really meaningful to the Ojibwe nation. Yellow being east, spring, water, childhood. Red being the south, summer, wind, adolescence. Black being the west, autumn, earth, and being a color for the sage. And white being the north, winter, fire, the elder. And I've always felt that if Osun Ursa was anything, he was harmony of everything. He was meant to represent to the space bears the picture of what balance and harmony could even look like in a world and universe riddled with war and pain. Yes, he's ferocious when he needs to be, but is also wise. He's mastered every element of these areas of life and can represent them and guide people through them as the master of his chapter. And I wanted to apply all of these colors in him in a fairly balanced way. So I went with red for the robes, black for the armor underneath, white for the fur pelts around him, which again gives that sort of polar bear feel, which I think is really cool. And for the yellow, I stuck with that brassy bronze, but used yellow glazes and even yellow paint with metal medium to give it a little bit more of that yellow kick to make sure it really felt like those four colors. As you can see, I'm working with contrast paints and fairly straightforward mediums. But the process I've been following in my personal hobby time that I've been really happy with the results of. The techniques that I've seen over the two years I haven't done as much painting as I would have liked to, but that modeled multicolored spray base was something that came specifically from Murray. And the white dry brush on top being the slap chop method, painting the metallic metals as like a non-metallic metal approach, which I really love the aesthetic of and is something I've seen done really well here in the studio. Yeah, there's a little bit of pressure because at the end of the day, I want to share it and there are some people who care about what he looks like or he should have looked one way or another. But isolating my thinking and just deciding that I am going to paint my chapter master exactly how I envision him and that is the right way. Well, I mean, that's the hobby. That's the way the hobby should be. There is no other right way. If you think he could have looked different, then that's great. That's your right way. This is my right way and I'm loving it, honestly. Then I finally get to move on to those detailed processes. Like I was alluding to doing that non-metallic metal finish on some of the metal areas all the way up to a sharp popping white with a bit of metal media mixed in. Sharp highlights in concentrated areas on the armor and the robes, but otherwise trying to maximize a little bit of that contrast and even working in some subtle textures to the cape and areas throughout the model. I don't know if you've ever experienced this when you paint a mini and you find yourself like just going and getting it, picking it up and looking at it for a minute and putting it back down. Appreciating the thing you made because you enjoyed the process and you're more pleased with the result than you expected you might be. That is how I feel about this and that is everything I could have hoped for, honestly. But I'm not done yet. Streak and Grime has always been a staple of the Space Bears. It was from the very beginning. And this is where I, my feelings on Streak and Grime began as very intense and probably over enthusiastic. By the way, we say Streak and Grime. We currently use track wash because the formula for Streak and Grime has changed and it looks weird and different. This is the closest to the original Streak and Grime that I used when I designed Space Bears. I used to be pretty heavy handed with Streak and Grime. Uh, it's become a bit of a, a bit of an inside joke or a meme inside the studio here. I have I've been a bit much with streak and grime, but I also have learnt a little more about balance <laughs> in my own journey. So while I'm not going to go heavy handed, I'm also not going to not do it just because it feels right for the space bears to tie him in with my army. So I'm going to go subtle, but not before I don't finish off some of those details. A micro 0.05 pen to put on some writing on the scrolls of the oaths of moment, the purity seals. I give the whole model a bit of varnish just to make sure that the streak and grime isn't going to negatively damage the paintwork I've done so far. And with that dry, it's a really subtle dusting of streak and grime on the lower areas of the model. This time I'm using streak and grime as a tool rather than slathering it over the whole model and dimming down some of the more vibrant areas of the paint job. I'm going to use it to guide attention towards the upper parts of the model, which will effectively make him look like he's been walking through some grimy areas like battlefields. But at the same time, he is a shining beacon of hope and a bit of cleanliness can help with that 
feel, I reckon. So by pulling back some of that streak and grime of the lower areas and really not touching much of the top areas with it, I end up with a result that I feel creates a bit more balance, but keeps that flavor of the original Space Bears. So FYI, before you make a comment about it, this is not the permanent base. I'm just putting it back on there temporarily. His final home will be in a little diorama that I have in mind. More on that in a little bit. So here he is. Without any further ado, my Osun Ursa, my chapter master for my Space Bears. But that's my chapter master for my space bears, which by the way, I'm so stoked to have finished and to be sharing with you, but I'm sharing a lot more with you than just my hobby. I'm sharing space bears with everyone, the Astra Prime Ursa and now ours. Thanks to the Kickstarter, the models that were created with Velrock and a huge amount of effort with everyone here on the team, only running for a couple more weeks where you can get everything as high valued and as discounted as we're doing. You can get 30% off of the entire collection and the collection is growing, so is that value. We have just unlocked an entire new type of unit, the Scouts, which will involve male and female units that can be fast moving, more maneuverable units. We've also already unlocked so much in terms of new poses, extra weapons, solo attack bear, unmounted bear units, and we unlocked the stretch goal of the mother of all bears, who in the canon of my space bears is Osun's companion, a giant gnarled ancient warrior bear, which we've already been working on the concept art for. So if you back the bundled tier on the Kickstarter, not only do you get 30% of what the original pitch of the models are, you're actually getting over $100 of extra value for free because every stretch goal we unlock, that bundle gets. So keep backing us and keep supporting us because you'll actually keep getting more out of it basically for free. It's a huge support to the channel and there's more stretch goals we're near. In fact, we're really close to unlocking the veteran pack, which will include elite models. We already, by the way, have an Osun Ursa character model variant inspired by this design, but in our new Space Bears aesthetic. And it already comes with different options for the arms and the helmet and the veterans pack will take that a step further, creating senior captains and leaders for our standalone Space Bears universe and aesthetic. Go check it out, the link's in the description. It's a huge support to the channel and allows us to keep doing exciting and ambitious stuff. And it's the reason why I'm not permanently putting my Osun Ursa back on his base because I'm saving him for his final resting place, a diorama featuring his companion bear. It's only right. I'm not realistically gonna play with this guy anytime soon, but I do wanna see him and his story come to life. And Arctus, his companion mother bear, is a huge part of that. And I get to do that in the future with you guys. Subscribe to see that, of course, even if it might be in two years time. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know when I'm gonna get to paint it, but I'm going to, and I can't wait. And I'll share that with you. Speaking of sharing, I am gonna be sharing Osun Ursa with Murray, who's gonna take it in, I'm hoping, a Murray direction. You're not gonna paint him like me or for me, mm. you're painting him like you for you. No, it'll be a very Murray direction. I can't wait to be. see what that looks like. <laughs> Murray direction's too. always weird and wonderful. No offense. <laughs> <laughs> Now Jezza has handed me this miniature to paint. This might surprise some of you, but space bears aren't our passion. They're Jazz's passion. It's his project, it's his baby, it's his army. And while we might enjoy it, it is not our passion. So he handed this to me and told me, do whatever I want. If I want to convert something, paint it however I want. You do whatever makes you happy. And I had to think about that for a bit. How can I approach this miniature in a way that I could just make it mine. And I wanna take you on that journey and allow you to sort of look at the space bears and maybe they're not your thing. And through this, maybe they can be. Now, after a bit of thinking, I came across the epiphany that concept art is my passion. I love artwork that evokes the world of Warhammer as an example. All the artworks you see within the codexes, the army books, the rule books. And I decided to go with something that's actually fairly Warhammer topical. Raymond Swanland has actually done the entire range of 40K codexes on the last couple of years. 
And he has a very, very unique style. It's very dark, lots of sharp angles and really, really strong contrast and colors. So with this as my muse, I set to building the model. I went for a very simple black with a white thinnethal spray as this will help me get an idea of how I want to light the miniature. Now, sometimes when I approach painting miniature, I do something just a little bit crazy. And some of you might've noticed this from some of my videos is that I just do this really, really random way of approaching colors. But really all I'm thinking about is not approaching it like a miniature. Don't think about painting a bolter, an arm, a hand, a little walkie talkie on the side of the helmet. I like to think about painting a mood, an environment, or just one color. In a very simple way, I'm thinking, where is this person standing in the universe? And what color is it? Once I've worked that out, I know exactly where to start. And if you've ever experienced a bit of painter's block, this is the best way to start a miniature for you. It is literally grabbing some primary colors, mixing them together, and slapping them on. Time and experience will help you, but also just trying it is the best way to learn this. Simply cover the entire miniature in paint, different areas, different colors, swap it up, and just keep doing that. Keep repeating these steps until you have something that just looks different and fascinating. A lot of people have complimented me saying that my artwork looks a lot like Craft World Studio with Alex and Marcos. And I am absolutely flattered by this as I am great admirers of their art style. And what I'm doing here is experimenting both with texture and also hot and cold colors, putting them in places you might not expect to see them and adding complexity to all the different surfaces. For this miniature, I decided it would be really cool Call if there was like a burning inferno below his rock, casting like dramatically up against him. It actually kind of put me in mind of Scar standing atop the burning pride rock in The Lion King. Do with that information what you will. However, inspiration can come from anywhere and I'm gonna lean heavily into it. The most important thing about painting like this is that you never have to be worried about having put the wrong color in the wrong place. All you need to do is decide, do I want this color here? If not, you can simply put another color over the top of it. Make sure your paint is thin and you can do whatever you want. Think of it like sculpting. You add a bit here and cut a bit somewhere else. And now this is where the fun starts. This is where the fun begins. It's time to start highlighting the model. And this is where you can start leaning towards the colors you would usually paint all these different items. Metallic silver or a gold trim, perhaps a red pauldron. But I'm not gonna go straight to those colors. I'm gonna mix those into the existing colors and I'll simply work like this, moving backwards and forth over different parts of the miniature, completely down to my own fancy. And if I get bored in area, I'll just move on to another one. In fact, you can see I haven't even started painting the character's banner. One trick I do use is that when I'm highlighting around the burning hot object light sourced area is that I will mix yellows and hot colors into the highlight. And I'll do the exact opposite on the dark side of him. I'll mix in cool blues and greens. If you think this looks wild and you couldn't possibly paint like this, I challenge you, grab a spare miniature and just have a go. You might be surprised. It's extremely freeing and it really makes you enjoy the hobby as there's absolutely no pressure and it's all down to your imagination. Now it's just gonna be a succession of moving backwards and forth between different areas. You think I finished painting the glow on the rocks? Think again, I'm gonna go back with a bit more red, start glazing it, come back later. Maybe it's not bright enough, I'll add a bit more yellow at the end. There's nothing restricting me from deciding if something is finished or if I want to keep going. And now as I approach the final stretch, mostly painting the face, it's time to start thinking about final touches. I'm not necessarily talking about simply finishing painting. I want to put myself in the mindset of where is my eye drawn to on the model so far? Specifically, is my attention drawn to the head yet? And if it's not, I need to start adding more and more color. I'm going to subtly introduce more outrageous colors, some bright pinks and even bright lime greens into the head crest, just to add contrast and visual flair. And when it comes to painting the eyes, I'm going to paint them blue, but also reflecting the fire below. So you're gonna see highlights of both blue and red within the eyes. And then having done that, I've decided that the eyes aren't standing out enough. There isn't enough attention drawn to the face. So I'm gonna get red and just underline the eyes, giving it a glowing effect, not just from below the rock, but also from within his eyes. With that done, I'm satisfied that enough attention is going to his face. So I'll start doing final highlights of white across the miniature in specific places that I want you to look at. The claws on his hand, the very tops of the skull, his muzzle and head crest, and also his leading knee atop the rock. This will create bright points on the model that'll make your eye move around and around and around, getting stuck as you admire every part of the miniature. Or at least, I hope it does. Because now I think it's time for some reveals.
A huge thank you to all our patrons. It is you that have enabled us to create this Kickstarter, as well as allow us to produce two videos a week, which is a crazy undertaking and we couldn't have done it without you. And if you'd like to join in, we have links in the description where you can join in on our mini patron Discord club, take part in our monthly mini review, where you can send in your pictures and we'll talk about them. We can ask for advice, hang out, and just talk about the hobby. Again, all the links are in the description. And now that you've seen both of our hard work, we can see each other's hard work. Yeah, we're, we're like, even it. now, struggling. Struggling not to look. Ready, swapsies. All right. <gasps> Ooh. Whoa, dude. I love nice. what you've done. My favorite thing about these sorts of models, when you look at it from the direction of the light source and it feels so hot and vibrant, and then you flip it and you're like, oh, it's so cold. It's yeah, you know, the immediate transition. <sighs> love it, man. You smashed it. The face looks great. This was such a cool sculpt. Thank you. It was really fun to do. Yeah. Uh, it's been a while since I've flexed my personal best for, for yeah. my own army, and it's been really fun to get stuck in the process again. Yeah, you've enjoyed getting back into it? I have, I have. And I've enjoyed sharing it. I love seeing what you've done with this. Yeah, thank you. And if any of <laughs> you do anything cool with your Space Bears models, use the hashtag Space Bears on social media and we'll mm. be able to check that out, maybe even share it in the future. Definitely. <laughs> Otherwise, that's it for this video. Glad you enjoyed the blah, blah, blah. Blah, 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 blah. All right, this is uh, something of a post credits scene uh, because whenever I show my working setup, I get questions about it. Uh, it is, this is an invention of mine from a couple of years back that sort of sat on ice and maybe it shouldn't anymore. It sat on ice for logistical issues and a bunch of stuff that I might go into into the future. Suffice it to say, if this setup is really interesting to you or solve some of your problems like it solved mine, because uh, I'm time poor and having a space setup that I can bring out and pack up really easily and quickly uh, without having a dedicated painting space at home, uh, that's what this solves for me. So if that speaks to you, if you like what I'm about to show you, I'll just put a, a um, Google, uh, uh, what do you call it, like a survey in the description, um, please go fill in the survey. The more interest in the survey, the more uh, maybe I should think about doing something with this. All right, this is my portable hobby box. So literally just my whole setup just is this. This whole, the, Everything is in here. Unlatches the front, that flips over the top, this comes down and this top half is a separate component. So then these open up, so the top actually keeps those in. When both front flaps are closed, it's really secure with these latches on. It actually can't separate. So that was really important to me. I was debating as to whether or not to talk about this, but I, look, at the end of the day, this whole chapter master thing in Space Bears is all about my obsession getting out of hand. So why not open up to another opportunity for that? So the basic tour is over here on the removed lid, you have your drawers. These are designed to fit uh, basic games workshop paint pots, Citadel colors, uh, up to the contrast range size, the medium to large-ish size. There is a larger size that doesn't fit, which is like the big technical effects, but they do fit lying down in the top drawer. These drawers are also designed to fit dropper bottles on their side, so you can fit two layers worth of dropper bottles. This is my clutter drawer. I find it really useful for tools, files, picks, sculpting tools, basing, glue, putty, chains, just a lot of stuff that's a bit more, you know, milliput, blue tack, you get the idea. So all of that fits in here and I also have this USB light. I keep this battery in here and that plugs in there and then that turns on. Nice little portable lighting setup. This is the main event. So aside from being side storage, this is also a shelf, which can hold an iPad if you want to watch some shows or whatever. It's also got a little lip in there so that if you want to, let's say, follow some construction instructions, that actually holds on there, no problem. Over here, we have the main drawer. I subdivide it into uh, premium brushes, so all my, all my uh, Kalinsky Sable brushes. These are my grotty and synthetic and rougher brushes. Uh, these are my sculpting tools that I keep all off to the side here, and a knife. And these are just sort of bits and pieces, sponges and string and brush cleaner and stuff that's a little more fiddly and delicate than the junk drawer. And it's a little further back because you don't need it as often. So usually I only really open it a bit. There's like a tiny little shelf here that I made for my self-healing cutting mat. And this is just wet palette sheets that I keep in there. There is also a drawer around the side here 
which is uh, very useful for me to keep my terraining and basing stuff in here. And then back here, obviously we have shelves which I've made so that you actually can have dropper bottles instead of Citadel paints, but this is set up to always have on hand all my space bears color schemes. Uh, so you just, you can put your go-to stuff there and go here for your secondary stuff. These back areas are really useful too. This bottom area here is really good for large work in progress models. So when I was working on Venom, for example, you know, he's a little bit big, some uh, uh, Usen actually stayed in there too because he was too tall on this back shelf. So that's a nice little storage area back there. Otherwise, this is the work in progress painting shelf. Some of these are my children's and uh, some of them are mine. I've just finished Spider-Man. I'm about to move on to Doc Ock. And for those of you who can't tell, I am starting to get into Crisis Protocol. So <laughs> this is my uh, personal hobby time project at the moment. So anyways, this is really useful for just sort of uh, model storage or extra paints or you know, whatever you want really. And then this is a little secret weapon here because it's actually a phone holder because you know, you can, or tablet, obviously. I'm holding my phone, so I can't really show you with this, but you get the idea That's uh, I find that like really useful. I'll watch a podcast or I'll put on YouTube while I sit here and paint and it's the best. I love my hobby box. Uh, I made this to fit uh, Citadel paint cup. I could in theory make it to fit other cups or something. Brush holders, uh, brush little tray here. And that is my custom hobby box. It hasn't got a lot to do with this video, obviously, except that it's just another one of my hobby obsessions. This one I haven't shared much because I hit brick walls in terms of like, how do I manufacture it? If I ship it like a wooden kit, like you can get with some of those MDF construction kits, it would be really heavy and costly to ship. And I'm not sure if people would like that they have to construct it, or maybe they would love that. And it's part of the hobby and making your own hobby box would be really cool. Or would it be wiser to like make a plastic manufactured or something, you know, that is lighter, that would ship easier, and that would be maybe more durable, I don't know. But there's so many of those questions that it got to the point where like, I couldn't answer them and I didn't have time to work on that anymore. But now the tabletop time's a thing and I could feasibly get more help with some of this sort of stuff. Most importantly, I can see and ask you guys if that's something worth pursuing, maybe it's worth looking into, I don't know. That's why I threw this in here at the end because I use it all the time. It's my personal hobby setup and it's a really cool invention in my opinion, that I haven't yet shared with the world. Should I? Let me know. Go fill in the survey thing and let me know if you must have this or, you know, obviously you don't, if you don't fill it in, then you, you obviously mustn't have it in particular and that's all good too. Just open for your opinions. Anyways, I've blabbed a lot. I love my hobby box. I'm gonna pack it up now. <laughs>